Yes, you. I'm so glad you're joining me here on Imaka News. You know, I have to tell you all, I'm probably the luckiest person in the world because I, I, I have a job that I enjoy doing very much. And I get to talk every day to very interesting people. And the following guest, boy, he just, uh, he's killing me. You know why? Because I get to talk not only to an author of a book, which, as you know, I, I enjoy very much throughout the years interviewing authors of different different books, but also it has to do, it's a book about food, which is my, like, just like my second most fun thing to do on this show is to talk about food. And he published this, I would say, extraordinary book, and I highly recommend it. Try to get a copy of it. Um, it's in English. It's called Good Food in Mexico City, a guide to food stalls, fondas, and fine dining. Nicolas Gilman, welcome to the show. Congratulations on your book. I loved it. Well, I mean, thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me. Well, you give excellent recommendations about, you know, to, uh, to you give recommendations about places to eat where probably – Many of our listeners wouldn't even phantom going, which includes street food and market stalls. I mean, I'm, I have to tell you, even I'm afraid sometimes on eating food in some of the market stalls because of hygiene and, you know, you don't know where they wash their hands. But uh, your book does an excellent job in suggesting places where you can basically pick um, and and uh, order some of what appears to be, you know, very, very uh, yeah, important uh, Mexican Mexican food, tacos al pastor, you know, birria, carnitas, mixiotes. I mean, um, it's uh, you did an extraordinary job. I hate you. What a great job. Well, Write a book you. and it, eating all these places. Nice work if you can get it. Um, I did. I did eat in and try every single place that is in the book, um, but there are supposedly 36,000 um, eating establishments registered in the city of Mexico, and um, I did not try it. Every single one of them, because that's impossible. Right. Uh, but I do believe that some of the best Mexican food is found in street stalls and markets and uh, fondas. Mm -hmm. And I, that's where I look for it. And I really think some of the, the wonderful Mexican food can be found. I do recommend eating in these places. If you don't know what you're doing, stick to my book, mm -hmm. because those are the tried and true places. I think one of the good results of the flu influenza crisis we went through last year is that people have really improved hygiene. You can even find that uh, gel, the gel right. at, uh, at street stalls now, and uh, people are wearing gloves and they're not touching money, and they're really much more conscious of of having good hygiene. What is your most absolutely favorite Mex Mexican favorite Mexican food? Well, if I have to pick. One dish, one simple, ordinary dish, I think it might be flautas. Mm -hmm. There's something about the crunchiness and the, the meat inside and the green salsa and the crema and everything that goes together and makes a kind of a divine food. Um, the sum of it, and, and when they're freshly fried, and I, I, I mean, it's not on anybody's diet list, let's say <laughs> it, but... <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, I, I guess there's a lot of Mexican food that is not on. It, it's hard to put them on your diet list. And you know what I've seen here? You're such a brave man. You eat fish. Uh, you're suggesting fish and seafood from markets and stalls, which is, you know, it, it, I've eaten in some of these places. And mm -hmm. you still can run a risk of getting really sick if they don't well, do a good job in selecting the seafood. probably can, but uh, life is full of risks. Um, the, <laughs> the, the places I recommend are really well known. The Tostada stand in the uh, Coyoacan market, for example. Right. Everybody knows that. And it just has such a... Uh, a, a high turnover of food, but there's one outside called El Caguamo, which is in the central. Mm -hmm. um, that also uh, the, the the fish is over ice. It's behind glass, and there's also a high turnover because there are always people there. Mm -hmm. Been there for years, uh, I, so I trust that one. I obviously yes, I advise people to be careful and not to eat fish where they don't know what's going on. Not to eat ceviche. Where, mm -hmm. <laughs> 
right. uh, Taco Bell Pastor that you don't know how long they've been there. But uh, that's why that's why I wrote the book. I did research for years, 20 mm-hmm. years of research went into this book. 20 years? Book. Well, wow. I, there, it was a book I wanted, and it didn't exist, and I I decided to do it. Nobody's done it for You know, you city. also have you have a section on international cuisine. cuisine well, and, we live um, in an international city, and there are some amazing restaurants here. You know, you mentioned what is my most uh, favorite restaurant here in La Colonia Cuauhtémoc, which is the bistro. You have a, a number number of bistros here, mm-hmm. but it's a bistro Arlequin, which is yes. this kind of French restaurant run by a French uh, Frenchman. I and, would uh, say that's probably the best French restaurant in the city. I would I would agree, and it's very. I mean, what I love about your book is that you're suggesting places to eat which are very reasonable, which is mm-hmm. also a wonderful thing about your book. I have a few expensive ones, too, but uh, most of them are in the middle or lower uh, category. And uh, in the international section, for example, I have a Chinese restaurant that is run by Chinese. It's the only one I could find mm-hmm. uh, that uh, where Chinese people actually go. It's a little out of the way, but for those, and I think a lot of uh, especially uh, Americans who are used to having good Chinese food who come from big cities will will love this place because it it's real, and they even have dim sum. Well, what the, what's the name of the restaurant? Uh, I can't remember offhand. It's a Chinese <laughs> name. I'd have to look. Well, you know what? Then <laughs> they'll just have to get your book. Um, where can they get more information about where they can purchase good food in Mexico City? A guide well, to food stalls, fondas, and fine dining. Well, it's not uh, directly distributed in Mexico, unfortunately. Of course, you can get it on Amazon or anywhere on the Internet. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a few copies for sale uh, at a bookstore in the Condesa and at the Museo de Arte Popular in the Centro. But if you look on my blog, which is goodfoodmexicocity.blogspot.com, you can see all the places where it's for sale. It's for sale in San Miguel de Allende, I think in a bookstore in Oaxaca. Mm-hmm. And Excellent. you can always order it. The Ooh. Spanish version, Come Bien en MDF, is, uh, is in all the bookstores. Oh, wow. Once again, uh, Good Food in Mexico City, a guide to food stalls, fondas, and fine dining. Nicolás, you made my day. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you very much, and buen provecho. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nicolás Gilman, I really, really recommend this book, Good Food in Mexico City, a guide to food stalls, fondas, and fine dining. Well, that's it. That's it for this edition of Imaka News. Don't forget we're broadcasting every day at 5.30 in the morning. Yes, every day at 5.30 in the morning. And in the evenings, you can listen to us. Uh, Sunday and Monday at 11 p.m., the rest of the week a little bit earlier at 10.30 p.m. You can also download this show if you go to our website, www.imagen.com.mx. Uh, you can listen to this show on that on, on your computer, directly on your computer if you go to that website. There's all these different ways that you can listen to Imagen News. The important thing is that you join us at least once a day so you can get your daily dose of Mexican news in English. I'm Ana Maria Salazar from our studios in Mexico City, hoping you'll join us in our next edition of Imagen News. Mixed.